welcome to the M Academy. Today we're going to look at two printing processes that may look similar on the surface, but are actually quite different. Laser powder bed fusion and selective laser sintering. We will look at what materials each one can work with, which geometries are possible, and where you will be spending your money with each process. But let's start with the obvious stuff. How does it work? Both LPBF and SLS start with a 3D model that's sliced into layers. In the 3D printer, you have a container full of fine powder of your base material, and that powder is wiped onto the build area in thin layers and fused together layer by layer with a laser. It's exactly the same process so far, but while laser powder bed fusion actually melts the powder into a tiny puddle, selective laser sintering just adds a small pop of energy that gets the powder particles to stick together. For SLS that works because the entire build volume is already heated nearly to the fusing temperature of the powder. And all the laser needs to do is add the last few joules of energy to the powder in order to push it over the edge and get it to actually stick together. The difference in result is that LPBF creates parts that are over 99.9% .9 solid. So essentially even better than as a cast part, as it completely melts the base powder while SLS only sticks the powder particles together, so it creates a sinter sponge that still contains considerable amounts of, well, air between the fused particles. Now laser powder bed fusion works with metals. The parts are mostly ready to use right off the printer, with maybe a bit of post-processing on the surface finish or drilling and milling holes and surfaces to precise dimensions. With larger parts and certain alloys, you need to have a heat treatment process before you remove the part from the build plate to get rid of the residual stress. This of course adds time and cost to your parts. Selective laser sintering on the other hand usually works with polymers. The most common one is nylon, typically PA12. SLS parts can be infiltrated or dyed to make them stronger or change the color. But of course this adds cost and process time. LPBF is what's typically used instead of SLS for 3D printing solid metal parts. So for this video, we'll be looking at SLS for printing nylon, and that's the difference number two. In SLS printing, because the entire build volume is kept at nearly the same temperature as that peak center point, when the powder gets fused, there's almost no thermal expansion or contraction. That eliminates the need for any sort of support structures and allows you to have maximum design freedom. Limitations like overhangs or bridges that may impact how well the part can be printed simply don't apply here, as the powder bed itself holds the part in the place well enough. Difference number three. And that leads us to the next difference. SLS can and definitely needs to have parts floating anywhere inside the build volume, because the parts barely warp during printing. This is great for in-place assemblies with moving parts or for simply making use of as much of the build volume as possible. LPBF, on the other hand, actually starts by fusing its parts to the build plate, the plunger that sits at the bottom of the build chamber. And that build plate needs to be the same material as your powder, so that the parts can fuse to it. After printing, the parts are literally sawed off from the build plate. This helps to solidly anchor them down during the printing, but the prints are also using support materials for areas that aren't touching the build plate. And for the last difference, number five. Something that you may not think about if you're not intimate with these machines is how long the powder lasts. You may think, well, just refill the powder container after a print and that's it. But no, it's not that easy. With LPBF, you always get a few stray particles that fuse together in the powder itself and don't stick to the part. Those remain inside the powder as large chunks. But because an inconsistent powder size does not really give you great or repeatable prints, those chunks need to be filtered out before it can be used for the next print. The simplest way to do this is with a sieve. Some machines even have a sieving unit built right in. In certain applications, the oxidation of the recycled powder is also very important. So the powder needs to be checked for its oxygen content after a certain amount of printing cycles. Now with printing nylon on an SLS machine, because the entire volume is heated to nearly the fusing temperature, the entire powder reservoir is also kept at that higher temperature. The problem with that is that polymers like nylon will degrade when they are kept at higher temperatures. And because the powder is kept so close to its fusing temperature, it will start clumping up over time. So the powder in a nylon SLS process is basically single use. Yes, it can be mixed with fresh powder, but the resulting mix 
is still a semi-degraded mixture that's not going to perform as good as a completely fresh powder. An SLS process just has a huge amount of material that's essentially being wasted. Some estimates go as low as only 30% of the raw powder being used to make parts and the rest simply gets thrown out because it's degraded too much. That seems rather wasteful and yes, LPBF also isn't 100% efficient with the powder. There's the added waste of support materials, but that's a lot less and under normal circumstances, it can be almost fully recycled. So lastly, let's check out how strong these prints are. We've printed the same part in FDM hips, SLS nylon, multi-jet fusion, also in nylon, and 316L stainless steel, LPBF of course. These are all completely solid and yes, the LPPF part is metal, so it's probably going to be a bit stronger than the others, but let's go and try it out. All right, so here we have our test set up and uh, let's try to break the FDM hook first. Yeah, from a trusty scale, you might be familiar with this one. This one goes up to 40 kilograms. Let's give it a go. 20 kilograms, 30, 40, okay, that's it. It's not breaking. Okay. I will get a chain and I will try to put my full weight on that. Thankfully we have prepared something here. There we go. Okay, so that's uh, 90 kilograms. Uh, I saw some smoke puff up there. <laughs> <laughs> so should we go for also my weight on the SLS hook as well? Yeah, let's go for it. So the first one was, was hips, this one is SLS <laughs> nylon. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So it's probably going to be a lot tougher. Okay. Full weight. So that's like, uh, again, 90 kilograms. I didn't think that. Yeah, but this is a, this is a topology optimized hook, right? Yes, yes, it's uh, optimized for exactly this uh, load. So let's see, this is the multi-jet fusion also in nylon. Are we going to have a chance to like both hang on that? I don't think so. Um, I'm, I'm sure we can uh, we'll work something, something out. out. Yeah. Yes, uh, let's try the stainless steel first. Obviously. Okay. I think uh, you're gonna break the frame first. Yeah, probably. So uh, let's try something different. So what, what, what do we have planned for this? Well, we have a bunch of powder over here uh, that we can load into this cage and it's 10 kilograms per bucket. Okay, so, so this is the actual powder you're printing with? Yes, this is the actual powder uh, we printed this hook with. So 85 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. So 125 right now, 155. 75, 85, okay. 185. And actually it snapped. Yeah, it snapped pretty yes. well. Yes, it's not pretty too strong bad. for such a small part. All right, so uh, let's get all the stuff out and then we will try the uh, multi-jet fusion part. All right, so uh, we're at 85 kilograms right now. Let's do the same thing again. So what are you expecting? Stronger or weaker than the SLS? I'm not quite sure. I'm actually thinking the same, maybe? 145. Yes. 150. 155. So 150. Ah, that was loud, man. <laughs> How, where did it break? Okay. Everywhere. This thing just exploded. Okay. I thought it would be tougher, actually. Like, closer to the SLS part. And also, if you look at how it fractured, yes. like this one has a pretty brittle fracture. It's split yeah. into multiple parts. This bit just broke out completely from the part. Whereas the SLS is still in, in two parts and this one yes. is in four now. Do you think we actually need to try the metal hook? Well, at, at least we should put the same weight on it as the SLS part to kind of verify that it holds up to the same amount of stress. We now loaded this cage uh, with all the powder we could find here and that's all together with the cage is uh, 285 kilograms and we're going to slowly lower that down and just see what happens. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to back away from this one. <laughs> oh, 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 the fixture is bending. It's actually bending quite a bit. Yeah, the entire aluminum frame is warped too. Yes. So I would say, okay, we've proven that the stainless steel part is significantly stronger. As we'd expect. Yes. That's good. I don't want to touch this because it's already creaking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that's it for today. Let us know what tips you would like to see next and stay tuned for more.